Hello and welcome to another Demon 212 Wii U review and oh boy did I have a bit of a time getting this review done for Ninja Gaiden 3 Razor's Edge which uh, just a bit of a nightmare bought the game online ages ago the game then got released my game didn't get sent so my brother found the game in store bought it we emailed the company we said uh, listen cancel it At the end of the day it's four days after the release date you've still not shipped it so just cancel it so 48 hours after um, buying the game in store, they sent me their copy. So I had to very quickly sell the copy that I'd bought in store uh, to cut me losses, which at the end of the day I paid a pound extra for 250 more stars that I could put on my brother's account. So not that bad. Um, and then of course I had to wait for the game to arrive, which took then about a week to arrive. So uh, it's one of those things. It's been a long time coming, this vid, purely because of... A damned online company so anyway at the start you've got new game you can obviously load game once you've saved a game you can go to chapter challenge which uh, one of the weird things about chapter challenge is that I noticed when I first put the game on you can actually play through the entire chapters without having played through the entire game so for example when you first put it on you can actually go to day 8 which is the final of the game and it seems a bit weird that they do that it's the type of thing that Seems more like it should be, once you beat your day, you get the data player, you know? Um, Shadows of the World is basically online. Um, and it's one of those, I will, won't be showing any online off because I truly do detest it. Uh, I'll mention a couple things very quickly though. Uh, basically, it's where probably the biggest disappointment is in the game. It should have never had online multiplayer. Quite frankly, I think adding the multiplayer into it is probably what made the game awful in the first place. And then for them to have to remake it in this, in a playable form, which this is, for anyone who's wondering, this is fantastic. PlayStation version, Xbox version, very, very bad. Awful game. This version, not amazing, but a hell of a lot better. I mean, it's the type of thing that it's a good five or six points higher on scale. Um, but... The online, you've got Ninja Trials, which is test your skills alone or with another player. Now this part's fine, because you can play them alone, and you can play them with another player, and they're co-op. What annoys me is, I'm on a Wii U. Last time I checked, this thing allows you to play multiplayer games on the same console. So why the hell did they have intentionally not put that feature into this? If I could have played co-op with me on the gamepad, or me on the TV, and my brother on the gamepad, you know, vice versa, I'd probably have a lot more respect for the multiplayer and see a lot more things about it. But instead, you have to play the co-op online. And that just seems like a huge opportunity missed. Especially because this constantly happens to me. I don't know if it's something to do with my Wii U or what, but I'll just constantly get booted off. And even though you can play some more single player, once that happens, it takes me back to the more the menu screen and it annoys the hell out of me. But uh, in Shadows of the Ninja though, it is your standard generic crappy multiplayer, so you can uh, play the clan battles and then you can customise your ninja and your appearance and you can unlock new things for them and that, and it's just... <sighs> it's very, very blessed. So, um, for example, starting weapons and that, I've only got one there and I haven't got a second weapon. I can unlock more by playing it, but I never will. Because uh, I tried it once and it was just not my thing at all. You can get new headgear, new clothing and that, new, just pretty much new everything, really. Um, and, and it's one of those, if you enjoy it, then great. If not, then welcome to my world I suppose uh, but enough waffling on about that it is as far as I'm concerned complete filler and the real reason why the game was crap in the first place you can go on training if you want you can go on status and display your current uh, status basically uh, so that's the online part covered I'll never let it darken my doors again or this review ninja records you can check gameplay data and view your leaderboard scores and that options the options are a bit lackluster on this one because originally you could fully customise your controls and on this one you can't. You get type A and type B and that's it. Uh, for the bottom one, the shoulder buttons, you get types A to D. But the face buttons only get two types and, and I don't understand why they've removed the whole customization aspect of it. Um, game settings though, you can choose things like subtitles on or off, karma, things like that. You can... Um, do quite a few other things to it so that it still is an expansive options screen it's just a bit of a shame that they took that out um, 
You've then got uh, the ability to play the game with a Pro Controller, which I strongly do recommend because playing on the gamepad, it's just, it's clunky, it doesn't really work, it, you, it, you can clearly tell it wasn't designed for this sort of game, it's just not good enough for this sort of fast action type gameplay. If you only have a gamepad, be warned before buying it because I strongly do think you need a Pro Controller. Um, and it's one of those, it's nice to actually have a game that uses the Pro Controller and that shows what the Pro Controller can do. Um, the only problem I've got then is, anyone who actually saw my video before I started doing Wii U vids about problems that I thought the Wii U had, one of them was the gamepad, now it can't be switched off. In a two week period, of not actually playing anything on the Wii U, just loading the Wii U up and playing VC games, I have to charge the gamepad twice without ever having used it. And now that I'm going to be playing this a hell of a lot more with the gamepad constantly active, because on Wii mode it's not constantly active, it just switches itself on, switches itself off, it's one of those that, uh, again, it just isn't good enough that you can't turn it off and I think there's going to be a lot of people who are probably going to experience severe battery memory just playing a game like this on the Pro Controller because of the amount of times they're going to kill their gamepad and have to charge it. Um, if you do use the gamepad you do get some things, so for example you can uh, just I'll probably have to hold it up. You can change your weapons with it. You can view your ninja skills. You can use Nimpo. You can view your ninja sense, which tells you where there's uh, the different combos and things come up on the screen. And it's just one of those. Um, it, it does have a few aspects to the gameplay that does work well for it. The, the touchscreen part does have work well, having a second screen. It's just for gameplay, it really doesn't work well. But anyway, um, apologies for that little cut. Basically, unfortunately, once I activated the combo system, I honestly couldn't get it off. No matter what I did, I couldn't get it off the screen, so I swapped to a Pro Controller. And apologies for the more, I suppose, waffling on than anything than actually talking about the game. That's going to change now. For those who don't know, the PlayStation and Xbox version of the game was just awful. The enemies didn't attack. The story was truly atrocious. The gameplay, it didn't have any decapitations or much violence and all. This, I genuinely didn't care about. What's important for me was the gameplay. I honestly didn't care if, the, if it wasn't bloody. I wanted proper gameplay. I wanted hard gameplay. I wanted fast, frantic action, not mindless button mashing because the enemies never attacked and you could literally do whatever the hell you want and beat the game anyway. It truly was, atro was atrocious, and the Wii U version, and I never ever thought I'd say this, um, the Wii U version is by far the best version of any game. It's not so much the U part that bothers me in that sentence, it's the Wii part. Because when the hell have I ever said a Wii version of a game is the best, and when the hell have I ever said the Wii version is hard? Because honestly, it's brutal. It's back to the way Ninja Gaiden should be. It's one of those that you do have to think on your feet. It's the type of thing that... Doing this vid, I'm stuttering like hell because I'm too busy trying to concentrate on not dying and speaking and it's proving to be very difficult. I really wish I had someone else here so that you could play the game while I just talk. But uh, it's one of those. It fixes everything. It truly is a fantastic version. It's still not an amazing game. It's not up there with the original Ninja Gaiden. Um, I, I suppose saying original Ninja Gaiden is wrong because the original was a NES game, but the original Xbox game because I think that had a much better story. I know people slated it, but I honestly liked the story, and I think it was a better game. This, though, is still an excellent action game, one of the best Wii U titles, and one of the proper reasons for a hardcore gamer to actually buy the game, the, the console. Um, the story on the game still does fall short. It's with... Out wanting to spoil much, the whole point is you've got an infected arm and you're told you're a killer and then at the end of the game it tells you you're not a killer but then comes up a total kill count so it's totally contradictive. Gameplay wise it is standard Ninja Gaiden affair with rock hard gameplay, they've done a few action quick timing events which are, they work well, they work better than on most games where they're enforced. Um, there's the ability to sense your path on the game as I say and I don't really like that at all because I'd rather just have the exploration there, which you can still do, you don't have to sense it. Um, bosses on the game are fantastic in scale again and it's one of those you'll get your ass kicked trying to work out how to beat them and sometimes you'll know how to beat them but doing so is a totally different matter. 
Um, one of the other things for the Wii U version that they've done is they've added a lot. For example, you've probably noticed I'm playing as Kasumi because you can now play as Kasumi, Mamiji, and Ayania. Uh, the gameplay system, you've probably mentioned, heard us mention already, saying that it was Deers. Well, basically, it's no longer mission, so it's no longer you get Chapter 1, Chapter 2. You get Deer 1 through to Deer 8. It may not sound like a lot, but there is a lot there because some Deers are a lot longer than others. Some Deers have the Ayana missions, for example. Um, there's scarabs in the game to collect, like last time, of which is 50 of them. There's a load of challenges you can do, and for example, beating 50 challenges will give you new costumes for Kasumi and Mamiji. There's um, 10 crystal skull type things to get. Uh, uh, they're probably not called crystal skulls, but they're kind of like crystal skulls. So the, the exploration of finding the scarabs and the skulls and that is there. And overall, it's just an absolutely fantastic game. Graphically, I actually heard people slating this, saying it looks worse than on the other versions. I honestly don't see it. Yeah, there's a few jaggies that probably weren't there on the other consoles, but I still think this looks like an absolutely stellar title. Uh, it's one of those. If you are sitting there saying that there's no games out for the Wii U, I honestly say you play this and talk to me after that because... It, it really is. It's everything that people wanted from a Nintendo console last gen. And it's just a shame that it's taken five years for Nintendo to release a console that's up to scratch with the PS3 and the Xbox. And just in time for the new PS3 and Xbox to come out. So I hope we don't fall back into the ways of the Wii console being behind. I really hope they can build on what they've started with. There's a lot of people already slating the launch and slating the games that came out. Personally, I'm not one of them. I was one of the biggest Wii haters out there, and I absolutely adore this system. I cannot believe the, the turnaround I have had, because I was always a Nintendo fanboy. I really wouldn't have heard a bad word against them. But when the GameCube came out, things went the other way, and I started to think, well, actually... And it continued that way. I mean, I love the DS, I love the 3DS, but the Wii, I detested it. The Wii U, though, I've already got more Wii U games available to me than Wii games over the past five years because I've kept barely anything for the Wii because I've not really enjoyed anything. There's already six titles on the Wii U that I can see me keeping five for pretty much the entire lifespan of the console. The only one I'd probably get rid of is Sonic and that's because I imagine there'll be another Sonic racing game coming out so I'll probably not, not need to keep that one. Um, I can't really shut up for any music because it's all atmospheric type thing. It's not really a proper shut up for music game. But uh, overall, I think it works well. I do like the voice acting in the game in some actors and actresses. Some are terrible. And it, it just again goes to the whole, I think the story isn't up to par with the first game. But overall, I'm liking this game a hell of a lot more than Gaiden 2, which I really wasn't a fan of. I, in fact, sold it because I'm hoping Sigma 2 on the Vita actually does the same job that Razor's Edge did to Gaiden 3 with fixing a lot of the problems I had with it and making it an overall excellent playable game like this pretty much is. It is, gameplay wise, it's astonishing. It's just a few of the other things that kind of make it a little bit worse. So um, all I can say is, seeing as they like to re-release the Ninja Gaiden games, if they ever re-release the first one on the Wii U and you've never played it, you have to get it. It is a truly spectacular game. And if you like this one, I really think you'll like that one. So there we go then. That's been the review. I hope you found it helpful. I don't score the games because that's based purely on opinion. So instead, I'll leave you to make your own mind up. So thanks for watching. And if you've got any questions about the game that I didn't answer in the vid or that hasn't been answered in the comments, then feel free to ask and I'll help if I can. Also, if you did find it helpful, don't forget to check out my channel because there's plenty more like this up there. And don't forget to subscribe because there'll be plenty more to come as well. So until next time, this has been Demon212, signing off.